Hi there, and welcome to a tech talk on an early look at ray tracing on mobile. I'm Zandro Fagnoli, a graphics software engineer at Arm, and today we're happy to bring on MediaTek's own Ying Chen, who will give you an overview around their new SDK. For the agenda, we'll first give you a snapshot of where mobile gaming is situated right now in terms of the market and the content we are seeing. We'll then dive into what ray tracing is and where real-time ray tracing is right now in graphics. After this, we will then show you how one is able to enable development of this technology today on mobile in advance of hardware support. Then we'll show you MediaTek's SDK, which includes a ray tracing API that is compliant with Vulkan and a bunch of post-processing effects to help you bring your ray tracing to life. Finally, we'll conclude the key takeaways. The mobile gaming market is the biggest gaming platform in the entire world. It is currently reported at 90.7 billion US dollars in 2021, up from a 77.2 billion in 2020 and 68.2 billion US dollars in 2019. 21% of all downloaded apps are games, where 43% of all smartphone usage is gaming. And there has been a 12% increase in number of players year on year. This shows that there is serious growth happening. And it is not only growing across the board, but according to Nuzu, we are seeing rapid growth in high fidelity mobile games. This means an increased demand for games that make use of realistic and compelling graphics. In China, the revenue share of high fidelity mobile games grew from 42% in 2016 to 70% in 2020. And North America, it grew from 6% in 2016 to 33% in 2020. This is important as ray tracing technology's use case is for high quality graphics. Over 1.4 billion devices currently support Vulkan, a cross vendor and cross platform graphics API. It provides developers with a standardized specification which unifies the ecosystem and provides developers with a clear path to achieving ray tracing in their applications and on their devices. In terms of the content we are seeing on games, there are four key features that we are seeing more demand for. The first one is a smoothing gaming experience. Mobile devices are shifting to a 120 Hertz refresh rate as we're seeing new devices support this. Post-processing is another feature that we are seeing demand for, effects such as bloom, lens flare, depth of field, and cinematic filtering. We're also seeing an increase in the complexity of the scene geometry and textures. And lastly, a key part to high fidelity graphics is the lighting. And we are seeing this continue to be a driver for success. This means more light sources and how those lights interact with the objects in the scene. So what exactly is ray tracing? Well, ray tracing is a technique used to render realistic graphics, which we've shown is in growing demand. It is a method that simulates the actual light by tracing the light's ray's path from its source to its destination. In order to calculate whether we have intersected with the objects in a scene, we use a special view of this scene called an acceleration structure. The acceleration structure's implementation can change depending on the driver, but one such example of this is a bounding volume hierarchy tree. It works by subdividing a scene into bounding boxes that surround the geometry. It is a lot faster for us to run an intersection test between a ray and a box, or rather a ray and a highly complex piece of geometry. If a bounding volume is intersected with, we subdivide that further till we reach a leaf node in the tree, which will be a candidate for intersection. Using these candidate intersections, we can deduce certain things such as whether a light is occluded by an object. For example, if we wanted to render a shadow. This technique was first achieved on computers in 1968. However, since it is computationally expensive, it simply wasn't viable as a real-time solution. So for real-time graphics, we'd need to use a simpler model known as rasterization. In 2018, this all changed when desktop machines became capable of real-time ray tracing. 
Today, we now have consoles even capable of ray tracing solutions. Games such as Fortnite and Cyberpunk 2077 all have ray tracing technology. And games like Minecraft have introduced it into their graphics engines. With hardware constantly improving, mobile will be next. It isn't just the hardware that is improving either. The entire graphics ecosystem is too. Kronos officially released a standard for Vulkan ray tracing, which is helping unify the expectations. Not only this, but there is an increasing volume of developer content that is surfacing, such as official ray tracing samples in the Vulkan samples repository, blog posts, or GitHub repositories trying to get out some of these techniques. Lastly, as more and more games come out with ray tracing techniques, we're able to learn from them. Mobile devices are becoming increasingly more powerful. The past two years of Mali-based devices have seen a 30% plus increase in graphics performance. And ARM have announced plans to include hardware support for ray tracing in future GPUs. And even when hardware acceleration does arrive, developers that use ray tracing will still need to carefully distill an appropriate balance between visual quality, performance, and power consumption. This ensures a beautiful and stable experience for the users and the players. It is currently possible with software implementations to achieve hybrid solutions that use RayQuery, along with traditional rasterization. RayQuery is an inline ray tracing solution that allows you to bind your acceleration structures to your fragment shaders to calculate where the light rays intersect with your scene. ARM is using this to jumpstart investigations that allows us to research optimizations, best practices, and solutions so that we can answer these questions. So even though hardware support isn't yet available on mobile, ray tracing is possible right now with the use of software implementations. This is important as it allows projects to start targeting their content early on and can begin to accustom developers to the Vulkan API and how they can write application in games that make use of this technology. Since a software implementation isn't accelerated, we need a way to make graphics workloads representative and their frame rates sufficient. There is a growing body of research alongside that is helping optimize RayQuery, and this is significant for the ecosystem, as when hardware support does become available, these algorithms and techniques will still be relevant. And they're going to help developers further utilize the power budgets of their devices to deliver cutting edge games and applications to their users. The steps that ARM took towards developing a software layer was to build a library that we could hook into the Vulkan calls for the functions that the acceleration structure extension uses. This allows us to build an acceleration structure view of the scene that accelerates the ray tracing logic. The next step was to provide shaders that could handle the ray traversal calls. To do this, we wrote our own ray traversal algorithm in GLSL. This allows the application to trace rays into the scene inside the fragment shader. To help developers hit the ground running, we wrapped all of this up into a Vulkan layer. A software emulation layer can then be provided to the Vulkan instance when you first load up the application in the exact same way as you would with a validation layer. And it provides the application with fully compliant Vulkan ray tracing extensions. This means that the application can use the Vulkan API, and as far as the API is aware, the extensions are supported and give the applications a working ray tracing solution. The software layer provides the extensions that are required so that the application can use the Vulkan API. And as far as the API is aware, the driver can support these extensions. The software emulation layer slots in between the driver and the Vulkan API, providing a software implementation for the API so that the application can perform ray tracing. This means the layer emulates the driver support, hiding away unnecessary implementation details from the API and the application. Therefore, 
the application doesn't need to worry about building and linking to third party libraries or including any shader code. It allows it to focus on what really matters, the ray tracing. Here is a video of the Bonza demo running on a Mali G78 device. It is a demo developed by my team, developer relations and graphics engineering. We've built a graphics demo that makes use of a hybrid rasterization solution that uses ray query hard shadows. We developed a PBR deferred renderer to do the main rasterization and then added a shadow mask fragment pass that casts ray queries to generate our shadows. As you can see, the lights are moving due to updating the direction of the sunlight, which casts a shadow of the window across the floor. It's important that you only spend time on rays when it's absolutely necessary. Using the same shadow example, you'll likely have a scenario in your shader where you'll loop over each light for the current pixel and traverse through the acceleration structure to find an intersection. However, if you're using punctual lights, which are lights that have well positions, then you are wasting time when you can determine a pixel isn't going to be touched by the light at all. By finding the distance between the light position and the pixel position, you can compare this with the light's range and see if it's within its boundaries. If it is not, you can skip the ray query altogether, and this makes punctual lights efficient. Another tip to go with the first is to make sure that you set your ray max to the distance that you've just calculated to avoid the ray needing to be traced across the entire scene. The next tip is to skip pixels that are not facing the light at all. Since we've already generated our geometry in the G-buffer pass of our deferred renderer, we have access to surface normal information and can use the dot product of the normal to the direction of the light to determine whether the surface is facing the light or not. If it is not, we can determine that it must be in shadow. Lastly, you can skip pixels that do not have any geometry drawn to them at all. For example, the far plane or the clear value of the depth buffer. This is especially beneficial for outdoor scenes where most pixels towards the top of the frame can just be the skybox, something you wouldn't want to try and intersect with. Reducing the resolution of your application is a great way to immediately save performance. In the case of generating a ray query shadow mask, you are casting rays for each pixel. Therefore, reducing the resolution can reduce the number of rays you are casting per frame. It can be done in two ways. The first is to reduce the overall resolution of the application. For example, a Samsung S20 native resolution is 2280 by 1080, which is quite high. An application casting one ray per pixel will mean you'll be spending nearly 2.5 million rays for any given frame. When you look at games such as Fortnite, they're rendering to 1550 by 720. So reducing your overall resolution to something still acceptable yields a much cheaper 1.1 million rays with not much reduction to visual quality. The other method is to use a separate shadow render target that uses a lower resolution. You can then generate the Rayquery shadow mask, blur these results, upscale and composite this with the full resolution image. And a visual benefit to this is that you can achieve softer shadows. We'll now pass on to Ying Chen who will introduce MediaTek's Ray Tracing SDK and how it can help developers enable Ray Query in their applications. Thanks for the nice Ray Tracing technology sharing. Hello everyone, I'm Luis from MediaTek. It's my pleasure to have this chance to introduce the MediaTek Ray Tracing SDK to all the graphics experts here. MediaTek SDK includes two parts, the Ray Tracing basic function, and the post-processing functions. The first part of our RTSDK is the basic function of ray tracing. The ray query style API is provided. Um, it helps 
it helps the developer to do the ray triangle intersection test in the shaders. And our API, our API are compatible with Kernel's Vulkan extension. So it will be easy to migration from PC's solution if you already have one. And we also provide some post-processing functions. Um, the advanced ray tracing effect usually needs some post-processing to improve the quality or the performance. And on our, in our platform, our, pro, pro, our post-processing functions will leverage the suitable hardware on our SLC and achieve the better performance and the better power efficiency. So, um, with uh, these functions in the uh, SDK, the effect developer can build the most kind of ray tracing effect with the MediaTek Dimensity chipset. The ray tracing API in our SDK, we provide the ray tracing API as the Vulkan extension. Um, we choose the ray query as our ray tracing API in the initial version. And in this version, and it's because it's more easy to integrate with the existing graphics pipelines. No additional render paths or even the render pipeline is required. Um, so the developer is only need to add the ray tracing logical block into the existing fragment shaders or the compute shaders. And then the ray tracing effect can be added into the layer application. It will be very easy. Here is our demo of ray tracing with some simple ray tracing effects, such as the hard shadow, um, reflection, or the reflection transmission. And here, everything. <coughs> Here we show the reflection on the teapot and the reflection on the crystal bunny. And let's focus on the bunny on the teapot. There is multiple bonds of ray are traced. We use the traditional GPU pipeline to render the teapot. And in the teapot fragment shader, we generate the reflection ray and uh, goes to the uh, crystal bunny. And then the ray may go may hit the crystal bunny and the, the second second bounce ray are will, will be generated and it goes through the bunny from one side to another side. And after search the after the hit point of the second surface, we generate the third bounce of ray. And this, this ray will from the bunny and go to the sky. After all these calculations, we can see the crystal bunny have the blue color from the sky on the teapot. And this effect is very hard to generate, generate by the traditional graphics, uh, traditional GPU pipeline. We need a lot of hack, and especially the refraction of the teapot is a curved surface. Okay. A quick summary of this on uh, our SDK. MediaTek ray tracing SDK will enable the ray tracing capability on our next generation chipset, Dimensity. Our ray tracing functions are compatible with Vulkan Great Query extension. The SDK will also provide some post-processing function for the ray tracing effects. Okay, that's all. And let's hand back the presentation back to the Lenjo. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. In conclusion, we've gone through and explored ray tracing on mobile and whether it is possible today. We've shown that it's not going to be free and developers are going to need to make sure that they're optimizing their content and carefully distilling an appropriate balance between visual quality, performance, and power consumption. We've also shown you that ARM have developed a Vulkan layer that emulates Raycree and acceleration structure implementations. 
And this makes it accessible to developers. And if you're interested in this development, please get in touch at developer at arm.com. Lastly, MediaTek have shown you their SDK and how it helps aid development of Raycreate applications. Thank you very much for listening.